It's not complicated, you see? A relationship makes it seem complicated, but it's always an inside job. It's always you and you, really. So just keep it really simple when it comes to facing your fears and insecurities and all that. Just realize that there is no relationship, not really, just for a moment. I'm not saying there's no relating, but a relationship does not exist. It's just an agreement. It's just a thought form. There's a being over there that's a reflection of you in some way. It's reflecting you. That's all there is to it. So what is reflected is shown to you by means of feeling. If you feel bad, if you feel afraid, if you feel scared, there's something there for you to look at, regardless of whether that's triggered by another person or by a plane crash on television or by a terrorist attack or by the money dwindling in your bank account. It's all the same thing. Like Just keep it really simple. There's no difference there just because it involves another person. It is all about you. When you as soon as you feel bad, yes, don't immediately walk away. As soon as you feel bad, notice that you're feeling bad because you have a belief that's out of alignment. Then shift your belief. Then shift your thought form. Shift your, shift your reference. What are you referencing? So a bad feeling comes up in relationship to someone else. That says everything about you. That says everything about what you believe about that circumstance. Investigate it. Be as lovingly present to yourself as you can. Be excited about having uncovered a negative feeling. So you can actually feel really positive and good about having discovered a negative feeling. Does that make sense? Many people go, oh, a negative feeling, oh, that means lack. No, a negative feeling means an abundance of clarity and alignment, reaching a new plateau, a new level. So be really excited about bad feelings coming up because they show you the things that are not you, that you hold on to, that you believe in, so that you can let go of them, transform them by actually changing your energy, by actually remembering that you are a creature of infinite worth and infinite abundance and that all beings are free to be who they are and you are free to be who you are. This is, it's, this is it. That's just a simple process of facing those fears, facing those insecurities. In a sense, that should become a moot point when it comes to relationships. That shouldn't even be conflicting with whether or not something resonates. It's, ideally, that's no longer, it's no longer confusing. Oh, wait a second, do I just want to move away from this or am I not facing something? At some point, that becomes crystal clear. Especially the more and more you have done this exercise of, hey, something comes up, it doesn't feel good, which means that my belief about this circumstance is not true. Let me look at it, let me lovingly and excitedly transform it into knowing I am infinite worth, everyone is infinite worth, and there's nothing that can ever be lacking for me. I can create whatever I want to create, choose whatever I want to choose. They can choose whatever they want to choose, and I will love them forever, they will love me forever, and we can never disconnect on a soul level because there is no time on a soul level. So you just become really honest with yourself, period, all the time, no matter what happens, whether you're in relationship or not. So even, so what I'm getting at basically is, the summary of that is, that your question for me has nothing to do with relationships. Does that make sense? So to simplify it for yourself, whether you're avoiding stuff or not, don't apply that to relationship because it becomes really, really complicated. Apply it to yourself in general. Am I avoiding looking at my beliefs and my feelings? If you're not, then you're absolutely clear that that's not what you're doing. You're no longer afraid of uncovering negative feelings because you know that is, that is a positive event leading only into greater alignment. That should be an attitude in life, period, whether you're all by yourself for the next 30 years or whether you're in all kinds of relationships simultaneously. It has nothing to do with relationship. This should be your attitude, period. I say should, there's no shoulds. This is simply my recommendation because it will lead you into that greater empowerment. And the more you do that, even when you're not with a partner, the more clearly you'll be able to sense what is actual meeting ground and what's not actual meeting ground. And when that meeting ground, that purpose, when the purpose behind the relationship has resolved itself, then why would you want to hold on to that? It's just an empty shell. I'm not saying it's always easy to let go or to break the news or to have that communication going. But at some point you feel that the relationship, the purpose behind it has exhausted itself. And now it's just for show. Now it's just, oh, boy and girl, whatever. A little bit of chemistry every once in a while, a little bit of sex every once in a while maybe. You know, let's go for coffee, oh, fun. But when the purpose is sucked out of the relationship, then it's time to move on because you're depriving yourself of something greater, grander. Does that make sense?
But can you adopt that attitude? You don't have to. You really don't have to. Take this at your own timing, obviously. But please, I, under, I urge you to realize that it does not make sense to stay in anything, whether that's a job, a relationship, a housing situation. If something is exhausted, the purpose behind it is extracted, the excitement that was in it has been fully digested, assimilated, everything is learned from it then it becomes an empty shell that starts to fade and fade and fade. That's not a bad thing. The souls are still infinitely connected and on their own level they're joyful and playful forever. It's simply that the resonant shells on their own journeys no longer can find and infuse that soul excitement into that circumstance together. So then it makes sense to move on. Does that make sense? Would you agree? Yes. That's not a bad thing. As soon as you feel that, oh, that sounds so bad, I can't imagine my partner leaving me or this thing that I endure disappearing. Know that you are believing something that's untrue. As soon as there's a contraction, this has nothing to do with relationships, you see? This is period human nature. As soon as you feel contracted, it's because you believe something that's not true. <sighs> Find your way into bliss by not acknowledging that you have negative beliefs that don't serve you anymore, seeing that they don't serve you anymore, remembering that you are a creature of infinite possibility and infinite worth and infinite love. And then you move from that space, feeling completely fulfilled in relationship with yourself. And I guarantee you that the people you meet will become continual reflections of that new state of being. You cannot, in that sense, meet your desired partner if you are not of the frequency that they represent to you. Does that make sense? So when we imagine our perfect partner, it's of a certain vibratory essence. It has a certain shine to it, a certain glow to it, a certain essence to it. It transmits a certain feeling, a certain vibration. It represents a certain image, a certain state of being, a certain level of consciousness. That is what you desire, but you imagine it, you project it onto an image of a person. You can never meet that person it's not possible. It's only possible as a glimpse, but it will be a painful glimpse. I give you a heads up. <clears throat> it will give you a glimpse so that you can know what to work with, so that you can see in yourself what is lacking, what, what lack beliefs you have, and what you're seeking for, and what you want to embody within yourself. But ideally, you work with that even before you meet them, before you have to meet them. And what happens is that as you start to embody the very essence vibration that they represent in your mind and you start to make that your own then well, when you no longer need that person they start showing up sometimes in multiple forms or in different ways than you might expect and sometimes in a very traditional pattern or like oh hey there is that person that I've been imagining now be careful because it takes two minutes to dump your shit back onto that person <laughs> that you finally attracted to yourself after all your spiritual work. Even then, in that moment, you will be first tested. You will get a glimpse. To be honest, I don't think I've ever had a significant jump in my vibratory state in terms of relationship, like meeting someone that represents that next level stage for me, without first being glimpsed that experience. If it's on a similar playing field, it happens effortlessly, naturally. But I get a glimpse you, when it's next stage thing. This is not a reason thing for me anymore, but it used to work like that. I would be given a glimpse. Like, can you handle this sense of self-satisfaction? Do you not need what you have when it's right in front of your eyes and you can touch your butt? <laughs> Will you still not need it when it's right there in the palm of your hand? Will you squeeze it to death? Or will you leave your hand open and just enjoy what you see? You'll be given that glimpse, and if you squeeze it to death, it'll be taken away from you for another while. Because you're not ready. You're not ready. And in a sense, higher consciousness will not allow you to pollute your true relational experiences, your true soul connections. And so it will test you in that way, just to protect your relationship, just to not to pollute it too much so that it's unsolvable later on because there's too much stuff in between. So be ready for the glimpse. You can give the glimpse to yourself using imagination. If she or he would be right here, 
You have that projection of your dreams. And it could be a car. It could be a person. But it could be anything. Like this applies to any dream thing you have. Will you squeeze it to death? When you get those $10 million, will you squeeze it to death? When you get that house you want, will you squeeze it to death? When you get that spiritual realization that you want, will you cling to it? Whatever it may be that you desire, if that person would be right here in the palm of your hand, would you let it just be there and love it? Or would you try to own it? If the wind picks it up, can it go? Or will you anchor it to the ground until it dies? Ask yourself. The moment your answer is a genuine and ecstatic fucking gone with the wind. <laughs> go as you want to. If that freedom is there, then you will get it. Guaranteed, it will somehow show up in your reality. Because you don't need it. You've already mastered that relationship before you ever meet her or him.